I'm Dr. Janine Krauss, and today I'm going to talk about cortisol and how it's important to get your cortisol in check as part of your owner's manual creation. What's the big deal with cortisol? Well, cortisol is a natural hormone in the body. It's not the devil until, of course, we provoke it a little bit by having these responses to stress. Cortisol naturally is there to help to wake us up and to put us to sleep. It gently rises overnight and peaks at 8 a.m. and then ski slopes down and about that 3 to 4 o'clock time frame it starts to really drop and then it levels off and then comes back up and wakes us up again. And so I like to think of cortisol in its normal state. It just puts us to bed and wakes us back up. However, in someone who is stressed, it can wreak havoc on us. It can wake us up in the middle of the night. It can wake us up at 3 a.m. and not allow us to go back to sleep. It can also cause issues in the middle of the day. And so it might be the cause for anyone who has that between 2 and 3, 4 o'clock slump during their day. That can often be a really steep drop in cortisol levels. And that could cause a lot of issues with mood, hunger, and even cause you to overeat when you get home or hit up that snack bar at work or go buy the candy jar up at the front desk at work. It's amazing what cortisol can do to us. For lack of a better term, it's sometimes for me, it's a little bit of a crazy hormone. Cortisol is also connected to increasing in belly fat with stress. And so another big issue in terms of getting your cortisol in check. Now, what do I mean when I say get your cortisol in check? Well, it means making sure that we can create patterns for our body to be able to keep that good slope up to that 8 a.m. and then the nice gentle slope down. So basically, getting cortisol back in its normal rhythm, being released in its normal rhythm. One of the big things you can do to help with cortisol release is making sure that you're keeping yourself hydrated. Why? Because if you're not well hydrated, your body sees that as a stressor. And so what it does is releases more cortisol. We create more body fat the more cortisol we have and the more dehydrated we are. And so one big thing to think of when you're thinking about trying to get in that little extra amount of water during the day. Now, another big thing to think about with cortisol is that it is directly connected to what we eat. A lot of people will wake up in the morning and have a sweet breakfast. And I don't mean sweet like awesome. I mean sweet like a bar or a scone or a donut. Lots of sugar, lots of carbs. Any sugar, any carbs, it's going to rise cortisol a little bit. You're almost better off skipping breakfast. I know. I know I said it. You might be better off if you're going to just grab for something just super sweet, like those cocoa puffs or something for breakfast. Because anything that is super sweet spikes your blood sugar and cortisol follows along with it. And then after that, you get a big drop in energy and a big drop in cortisol afterwards. And so a lot of people who are grabbing the sugary snacks or they're going by Starbucks and getting the venti blah, 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 frappuccino, something or other with all kinds of fancy stuff in it, caramel, latte, you name it, lots of calories, lots of sugar. That's putting your cortisol way up here. Then you spend all day forgetting about drinking water. Oh my gosh, lots of belly fat storage. But also you set yourself off for this roller coaster all day long of ups and downs of your blood sugar. Another big thing that I've found causing issues for folks is that we've been told diet wise to balance our blood sugar. We need to eat every two to three hours or every three to four hours. And I'm guilty of even telling folks that for a very long time because it seemed like it worked. However, the caveat is, is that it depends on what someone's eating. You can't just eat every two to three hours a little bit of sugar item. That makes cortisol do this. You've got to balance it. And so for breakfast, there's got to be a good amount of protein and some good fat. And I will have resources on my website that show you how to balance these foods out. Now, that protein plus the carbohydrate, that balances, but just a little good fat balances it even better. Carbohydrate on its own, cortisol goes way the heck up here. You don't want to do that. So first thing in the morning, I actually recommend making sure you have a very good amount of protein with a good amount of carb, 
a good amount of the good fat. And you'll see some resources on the website. Then lunchtime, same thing. Dinner time, making sure you have some good carbohydrates at dinner. Don't do the trick where it says 2 p.m., 3 p.m., no more carbs. I'm even guilty of telling people that. And guess what? For years, I was waking up at 4 or 5 in the morning and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. As soon as I started to add in a little bit of carbohydrate, and I'm not talking about copious amounts of ice cream or, you know, a whole bunch of like three cups of rice. I'm talking about a half a cup, a quarter to a half a cup of something at night just to help to keep those cortisol levels in check overnight so they don't rise too fast. I've seen it with a lot of patients. What we do is we check their blood sugars first thing in the morning. Blood sugars will drop if someone has a little bit of carbohydrate in the evening. It even works for diabetics. It even works for my folks who are pre-diabetic. The big thing is, is just looking at what type of carbohydrate. I'm not talking about eating something that is like Laffy Taffy that goes in. That's like mainlining sugar. I'm talking about a whole grain, something that digests a little bit slower. And so nevertheless, looking at cortisol and how it affects your body is a huge thing. The other side of this is how you react to stress. Are your stress levels causing your cortisol to do the roller coaster throughout the day? Are you getting spikes in your blood sugar because maybe you get stressed and you go and run out to the vending machine at work to go get some chips or go get a candy bar? Your stress cortisol goes up here. Let's face it. I'm raising my hand right now. I totally have stress eight. And that is also a negative factor for creating the roller coaster with cortisol. So some of the big things to do here to get your stress under control. How do you do that? Breathing. It's free and it's great to just take a moment and relax. You can take a big breath in a five count in and a five count out. Do that five times and that will help you to reset your nervous system. And so literally an inhale counting into five and exhale counting out. feels kind of weird to do that, but I'm telling you, do that five times, do it 10 times. See how you feel afterwards. It's literally telling your brain up here, bear's not chasing me. It's all good. That bear is far, far away. That'll help to balance your cortisol levels. It'll help to put you in check. It's a great trick to do too. If you are a stress eater, you get nervous and then the food starts to go in do that breathing. It'll help you out to get that cortisol under wraps. The other thing that I recommend is taking breaks and doing absolutely nothing. For folks who are multitaskers, that might be a little odd, but really taking the time to relax, take walks, smell the roses. That will help to get your cortisol under wraps as well. And so one of the big things to keep in mind here, just to kind of wrap things back in, is that protein for breakfast, no carbs by themselves, little bit of carbs in the evening for dinner so that you can sleep great throughout the night, work on breathing, and take time to smell the roses. That will help you to balance your cortisol. And that's a key component to check in on for creating your owner's manual. I'm Dr. Janine Krause. Stay tuned for my next episode. Thanks for watching.